how long have your like what brought your interest here? Uh, why uh, <laughs> have you all been reading the book, or was it just? No, uh, yeah. I've been using Tai Chi for many, many years, yeah. about 30 okay. or 40 years. But lately, the last 10 years, I haven't done that. I've done other things. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, that's interesting. I, uh, I'll revisit and learn yeah. from an expert. I've just been doing oh, this. I'm, I'm, I'm no expert. Yeah. I'm, I'm just. Uh, I've been using the book for a long time. Yeah. 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 My story is pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. you know, that I've always used it, and I used to keep a, um, you know, keep a, a journal of what I was doing. And because yeah. sometimes I was saying to Helen today, sometimes you can get it, and it's a bit cryptic mm -hmm. to try and translate to try and interpret it. Oh, so okay. it's really interesting to look back in time and see what you've got. Right. And, but I haven't used it um, for quite some time. And I thought, oh, right. I mean, what about the, the rest? I could never understand it. Okay, so, <laughs> so all of all of That's us have uh, some some background to this. I don't have any background. Okay, so there's a broad. Uh, no, I broad. don't really. I yeah. used to read tarot cards. Yeah, I used to. Do that. I'm interested in the, in uh, this, this other sort of aspect. Mm. So. Mm. Okay, I know that. All right, uh, that's my email. If you want. Just a brief, uh, quick history to this book. It's one of those oldest book known to human beings, uh, humankind, because uh, we have records dating back like a few thousand years. You'll have to talk up a bit, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'm deaf in one ear. <laughs> All right, then come closer. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's one of those uh, oldest books that, that, known, that is known to mankind, and uh, it started off with this, uh, legendary figure actually by the name of uh, Fu Xi and um, way back uh, some historical dating back 4,000 5,000 years and he was the man uh, who or legendary figure that started this this uh, this the beginning of the book was attributed to a man by this name that was a long time ago and then uh, about 3,000 years ago uh, 1,000 years before Christ there's this uh, man, and he has historic. He's a historical person, and he started. Uh, he wrote the uh, oracle, the words uh, attached to the uh, hexagrams. We call them. Uh, after this, you will see what what is meant. And then after that, this this is one of his sons. Uh, uh, he died, and then one of the sons uh, took over the writing, and the Duke of Zhou was the man who wrote the lines. So there are three things, uh, uh, three aspects to that one book. So it came down through history and uh, through the dynasties in uh, China, a lot of, um, it survived the, the test of time. <coughs> so it's one of those old, old, old ancient stuff. Okay, a quick word on here, like the beginning. Uh, this is one uh, beginning, and actually, in, in terms of the Chinese philosophy, the beginning is like void. There is nothing. So there's uh, two. After that, then there were two things in the yin and the yang, and it came into interplay. The interplay, um, and then after that, then then the other things came about. So basically, in, in terms of life, uh, as far as the book is concerned, if there are two forces. The yang, the yin, and the yang. Are you familiar with mm, it? Yeah. So uh, through the interplay, then then uh, everything came about. Now the the yin yang idea is slightly different from say the polar opposites. Uh, is is they are inter interdependent. Like one cannot do without the other. They just come into play. And through the um, through the yin yang uh, idea. If you put three of them together, now this is this is attributed to Fu Si, the man, the man on the left just now, and he started this thing. Uh, so three, uh, we call them uh, trigrams. They are they, these are called elemental forces, and then images, qualities, and relations. So on the right hand side here, uh, this one here, here that's the heaven, and then thunder, uh, here water, mountain, earth wind or wood, and then fire or lightning, and then the last one is the lake. So this uh, sort of uh, points to very elementary forces that affect us. And there are two arrangements. Uh, some of you must have seen this uh, 
this this arrangement. This is a, this this is the first arrangement by the man on the left, the Fusi, and it's polar opposites. So if you place the eight trigrams like that into an octagon, then what you get is is uh, this Fusi arrangement of the trigrams. And then later, King Wen's arrangement, uh, cyclical. So he placed the trigram in this way uh, to reflect the cyclical parts. So if you summarize this, uh, the things around, there are two big things in life. Either you think of it as polar opposites, or else it's the cyclical thing in time. So that's how the, the big ideas that is underpinning uh, the, the, the book itself. Okay, um, if you stack them up like that, uh, stack the two tri uh, trigrams up like that, then if what, what we get will be a, um, what we call, of course, the hexagram. So two trigrams. So for example, then, if you have wood, and then you sort of stack the water up, then what we have is actually then what we call the well. So this, like if you have three of them, then, then it's, it's a trigram, but if you stack them up like that, then you, we have what we call a hexagram. And each hexagram, there are 64 because there are three, and then eight times eight is 64. Then each hexagram has a name. So there are 64 hexagrams, each one of them has a name. And then each hexagram has an oracle, or what we call a judgment. Now this is attributed to the first man who see. This one is attributed to the middle man called King Wen. And then this one is attributed to uh, the Duke of Zhou. So each one of the three men sort of contributed to the book that we see uh, right now. So uh, if you can, so for example, the well that I used just now, then this is the oracle here. Uh, this is written by King Wen. And then if you get this hexagram as a response to your question, then uh, one can sort of uh, change the village, but the well cannot be changed. There is no loss again. People come all over and they draw from the well. But the thing, the imagery is if the pitcher gets near the well and it gets entangled, then that's not a good sign. So that's the oracle bits of the, uh, this particular hexagram. And then here the lines is cast out from the bottom. So in short, that's basically yin and yang. You stack three lines together, you get the trigrams. You stack two trigrams together, you get the hexagram. And then these 64 hexagrams or archetypes, uh, that is it. It covers uh, all human affairs as far as the oracle is concerned. I was going to ask like, what was the initial purpose of it. Like from my knowledge is limited, but from the tarot, mm -hmm. it's, it was a book like the 60 cards were the book of life from beginning to end. I mean, well, the book of not life so much, but spiritual development. Mm -hmm. So what were these, these three men who did this, what was their purpose? Um, I'm not in a position to say that because uh, it's more like a, I, I don't know. The oracle about it's, life or? It is an oracle. Yeah. It survived the, the test of time. Uh, for some reason, this man wrote this book. And I would and like to say also that um, in Chinese history, they've always been really um, quite interested in communicating with the spirit. So lots of kings and like ancient rulers would actually be very interested in what the spirit has to say. So in a sense, we could think about the book as a way for these rulers to communicate with them. As a vehicle? Yes. But not Taoist, not involved with um, actual religions? Um, not, I don't well, understand. Well, the Chinese religion with Co uh, Confucius or others mm -hmm. is not linked with the religious people. That's what I'm trying to understand. Okay, this, this predates Confucius by a That's few thousand saying, years, yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's <laughs> not... Uh, Later on, the Confucius, uh, Confucianist uh, people came in to, you will see, I'll come back to, and then uh, what Jung and did with the translation of uh, Richard Wilhelm's uh, tra German translation, and then rendered into English. Because, I mean, many religions in the West are against tarot and see it as evil. So I don't know what relationship um, that is. Okay, it's a long shot here. Uh, as Chinese philosophy, uh, they, we, we don't think in terms of 
uh, the God and the devil. It's, it's, it's not like that. It's like there is this nature, natural parts, and then how, how it unfolds. Uh, and then the Tao is like a movement, uh, a wave of movement coming up and down. The book is like a guide. You want to ride the waves. So if, the, if you see there's this big wave coming, you, sh you know, you show us how to, you know, you don't want to sort of run against it. Mm. I'll touch on this later on, uh, after I've sort of touched with the sort of technicalities underpinning this, this thing. Okay, interesting question. Uh, that's the uh, 64 archetypes. Uh, it's a mysterious thing. Nobody knows. Nobody knows exactly when, uh, but it dates back that time. But you cannot actually when the, the two men just now here. Origins we don't quite know, but these are the two men. Sort of, uh, they took the hexagrams, uh, they took the trigrams, and then they built the hexagrams. Um, it's hard to uh, pin down the Chinese philosophy in, in a short talk like this, but I want to get into the the oracle aspect. Uh, if you read the book after many years, you will see, start to see that it's actually more like a way of life, uh, how to guide people through the way of life. Okay, so here that's the. That's where we are at, stacking up the hexagram, and then these are the names of the, um, the parts of the 64 hexagrams. And then this is a table, so if you sort of, there are 64 because there are 8 times 8, and then there's upper trigram like that, and then the lower trigram, and the combination will give you the 64 hexagrams. So basically the book is, um, consists of 64 hexagrams. That's a way to consult the book. Uh, it's a divination system. Uh, sometimes you, uh, uh, you afterwards we'll have a go at try. You would you be interested in trying? Out this? Oh yeah. Okay, so we'll have a go at that. But basically, there are just sixty-four hexagrams, uh, and then you consult the book. You go through some system, and then uh, the book will you will arrive at some one one of the hexagrams, and then perhaps some changing lines. And then uh, that's your that's your oracle. Mm. But aren't they on cards? Aren't they okay, we get to the methods next. So how to consult the book? Uh, there are several methods here. Uh, the or the oldest one we use the yellow sticks. There's uh, fifty sticks. You take one out and then through a process, and then you get your. That takes a while, uh, and then after that, there are many, many years, hundreds of years later, then they have this tossing of coins. I think you're more familiar with the tossing of coins. Uh, the yellow sticks, both yellow sticks and the uh, tossing of coin method is, uh, yeah, you have three coins and you toss them, and then um, the, the, let's say there's heads and tails, so heads would be value of three, and the tails will be a value of two. Um, and that's, uh, okay, I'll, we work together afterwards if you wanna use the methods. Okay, so then uh, there's other methods as well uh, which I'll introduce to you, and this is using cards. Uh, I've made these cards. Uh, okay, this is just whole stack them. Uh, you get them. Uh, 16 cards, cut them and then put them like that. And then there are four types of lines. Uh, the first type is the unchanging yang line. Uh, second one is the unchanging yin line. Third one is the changing yang line, which is, has a symbol like this. Changing yang line means this is a yang line, but it will change to yin. Mm -hmm. That is a solid line, but it will change to a broken line. Whereas for the yin line, then it's a broken line, but it changes to a solid. So there are four types of lines. So uh, down here, there are 16 of them, because the probabilities of getting each one of these are slightly different. Most likely, the most uh, high, highly, uh, 
the most probability, the highest frequency is for the yin line, and then the yang line, and then the changing yang line, and then the yin, changing yin. So different probabilities. Okay. So uh, this this kind of a, like uh, method is to reflect back the probabilities of the uh, yellow states. It's a bit technical, mm. but you sh you know have to. <laughs> So there are various methods, and then after that you get the uh, get the hexagram. Uh, do you want to like have a? Uh, my daughter Dana would sort of give everyone a set of nine nine of the cards. You can have a go uh, if you want to learn the new method. If not, then you can stick with your toss uh, coin tossing. The coin toss thing has a different probability. So it sort of messed things up yeah, a bit with more the. Accurate. Uh, if you want to stick with the original, the, the way it's back, yeah. the, you know, the, 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 the people who started it is the yellow sticks. But these cards reflect the probabilities, the same probabilities as the yellow sticks. Let's just hang on, just be patient. Yep, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have the set of cards now. Um, now this is uh, like a not a tr uh, one shouldn't treat it like a trivial, you know, like trivial thing. If you treat treat it trivially, you get a trivial response, yeah. and it sort of mess things up a bit. Yeah, it's it's like a, with due respect, you're asking a question concerning yourselves or your life, or whatever it is, big decisions, uh, big things in life, or something. Uh, some question about yourself or your something, someone close to you, something, something uh, important. Uh, then you sort of set your set state of mind, meditate it, be quiet. Uh, it's best that you write the question down uh, because if you don't, then it gets all over the place. So it has a sort of a, at least you can go back to the original question and then sort of stay focused on the question itself. And then you can consult the book. In a respectful. Can you ask the question about someone else without them knowing? Um, the book is is uh, it depends on your intention. Now oh, those good uh, intention. Yeah, uh, 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 if you yeah, it depends on the intention. If your intention is to sort of help somebody, you know, uh, most likely you will get a uh, accurate, you know, uh, uh, a response which we call uh, uh, in tune with the uh, the Tao, the, the spirit, you know, the spirits. If your intent is like, uh, you know, you want to take advantage and all that, that's uh, that's basically completely out because, you know, you're not. It's it's outside. It's it's not like that at all. Uh, if such a person, such a being, were to do that, over time, uh, he, it, it wouldn't work. It's, it's, yeah. So the intent is to, if your intent is okay, I want, I try, I'm trying to understand this person better. Then, uh, okay, then what is it that I can? If the intent is to actually help someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then, then it sort of falls back to your action. You know, usually crafted in terms of like, what sort of question would you ask? You know. What is it about this person that I must understand before I can help her or him? It could be like that, or else you feel okay. Uh, you know, what is the wisest way to to approach this person? Then, then you will get a response. So it is important you sort of craft the questions clearly and sincerely and, and with no ill intents. So if you if you have a, a young ready to, or uh, you're interested in finding out, to, uh, have a go at this. I've printed out a particular translation of the book, okay, and um, there are 64 of them, of course, there are 64 hexagrams. Um, Do you want us to? No, no, it's up to you, I'm not, so I, that's, that's the basic introduction. It's an ancient book. For some reason, this man wrote them. Those maybe those days they're more in touch with the spirits out there. It's based on a, a, a divinity system, uh, the yin and yang forces. Throughout my uh, my 
adult life has been very helpful. So this um, is all you need to know to get going. It sounds uh, very too easy. <laughs> no, I, I wouldn't say that. Okay, there are different grades. When you first yeah. start, you would do certain things. You would see it certain way. But as you learn, you learn more about yourself. Yeah. Rather than anything, it's more about how you are, the being, the way you are. Yes. And then develop from that. That's why it's interesting. Yeah. If if uh, I see many uh, events in life, you know, if you have a really big event, I think you might want to ask because uh, it's like a second opinion. Now the book doesn't tell you what to do. It's not taking over anything. It's like a wise guide. It's been around. If you are interested in human affairs, you want to do this or that, and then sometimes we just don't know. There's just too many things for us to know, so we don't really know. So we're looking for an advice or look for a wise being to give us some opinions. Now the being wouldn't say, come in and tell you, look, do this. No. It's more like, okay, then what is your question? If you have a question, yeah. will they give you a yes or a no? Will they just sort of leave it all? Well, we talk some... about wealth and tangled lines. Right. I mean, if I have a direct question and I want an answer, I want to know yes or no. Okay, now if you look at the uh, oracle, uh, there are basically several things uh, in human terms. It's dualistic. Either it's good fortune or not good fortune. Either you receive praise or you receive blame. Either things will work out or things won't. Now, it depends on how you phrase the question. What, what, what question do you have in mind? Oh, I want to know if my daughter will ever get married. <laughs> 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 um, I'm waiting for her. So okay, so so no, no, it's not like if you, it's not, if you're looking like a prediction, as if like somebody would tell you, you know, what will happen. It's it's not like that at all. But it must be out there in the ether. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why must it? Uh, it's out there in the ether. Um, yes, I'm not yeah, sure. <laughs> No, no. Let's uh, let's come back to the book. If you if the if you're asking for a prediction, it doesn't work like that. No. If you're asking for an oracle, like uh, what is it about my daughter? And no, I under to understand her better, oh, I so understand that yeah, that <laughs> why she has, isn't getting married, or that why why she's not married. Um, you see, it's that's the sort of that, that, that's to person. do. That's to do with your view of life as well. Now, if you think that it's all out there, then you're thinking that life is fixed, but it is not. Yeah. Mm. There's a certain degree of randomness, synchronicity, if you will, uh, Jungian concept there, mm. yeah, synchronicity. Um, a lot to do, it's not all predetermined, no, no. It's like, what would you do? You have to act. Now, well, <laughs> hands off or something. It's like, like okay, if you put it this way, then then maybe your daughter has uh, has to live out her life. Mm. I don't know. Oh, you can ask her to ask the book. I'm just wondering if this might be a suggestion that you could ask how you could best help your daughter to have the wisest outcome of this situation that she's facing right now. That could yeah. be something. Mm -hmm. that I mean, I was very blunt when I gave you, you know, the question I wanted. To answer, but I mean, you know, I can work around that. Mm -hmm. um, yes, you certainly can. Relationship. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a very so complex situation. I know all about it. So I mean, it's it's <laughs> no, well, I'm saying it's a situation. situation. You can't. Oh, that's what I wanted to know. Yeah. Yeah. I said, you know, I asked how to do it for someone. Are, are you ready for the method itself? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Um, if you have pieces, oh, we don't have pieces of white paper or something. Now, uh, I, I show you, show you the tank. Oh, okay, at the back or something. Okay, I have the. Uh, um, it's preferably you have a table or something because the the cards, uh, or or else you have to. Uh, it's, it works on the uh, randomness. Uh, it must have a degree of randomness. You cannot, you know, like just pick one and all that. And it works like that. Um, maybe before, I'll, I'll tell you the technique, okay, or the, the technicalities before you actually uh, do that because uh, I don't want to. 
Okay. Oh, this, this sheet's a paper here. Okay, the technicalities is this. You are to get six lines after drafting your question. Six lines. And then the line starts from the bottom. The first line is at the bottom. First line. Yeah, so of the 16 cards, then you have to just shuffle them or have the degree of randomness. No, no, don't do that now. Just, 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 just oh. know the technique. Because before you actually start to consult, there's no practice session. Uh, it's, uh, I don't think it's prudent to practice. Okay, i just tell you, just uh, the 16 cards, so you pick one card at random. That will be your first line. After you ask the question. After you have asked the question. And after first. you've shuffled. After you have shuffled. And then that will be your first line. And then you put that card back, shuffle again, do the same. You repeat. You repeat six times to get your six lines. And then you record, maybe you write down, uh, or just draw the lines. So if you say, for instance, you get this line, a solid line, then just draw on a solid line. If you get a broken line, get, just draw the broken lines. So if you got a line that's like this, uh, just just draw it like that first. I'll, I'll guide you further if you, if you need to. If you get a line like this, then just draw exactly, or draw an image of that. So you do that six times, and then you get your six lines. To get your six lines. No, no, these are four types of lines. So you just do six times, and then you get your line. And then, um, well, you get, I'll read the hexagram, I'll give you the hexagram, and then you can read for yourself and perhaps discuss that. So, do we need to ask a question? You, you well, um, yeah, uh, of other ourselves. Yeah. Yep. Of the other Yep. Um, you might want to sort of run um, questions, um, like there's not yes, no question, it's like what is the best course of action? What do you think of this person? Uh, tell me my, you know, how to orientate my life. What is the wisest course of action I can take? Yeah. How should uh, I approach? How should I approach X? Or what is happening with G or something? I, I, I want you know to understand this person better. And then there's an opinion or a view, and then then you you will get X. Okay. Uh, so before you start, uh, you should quiet down a little and then write down. Oh, God. Interesting. Okay. Mm.